had a very interesting conversation with my daughter the other day about aliens. Aliens in movies are depicted as the people who come and try to take what we have and try to destroy our planet. And I was telling her, like, do you think that because they are different, they necessarily are bad? Because that's exactly what it's telling us. That's what it's, it's telling my little girl is that, well, anyone different that does not speak my, um, my language, that does not look like me, is bad and has bad intent. I think there was some point growing up where I just started realizing that the, the way I was experiencing the world around me felt flat and that there was more going on than what I could see. And I think maybe it would have been nice to just live in that flat and shinier world where everything felt a little fairer and made a little more sense. But as I learned more and I could see more things around me, that felt more alive. My whole life I've been told by the media, by the way people I look up to, you know, when I was a kid, to be afraid of people of color, or to look down on people of color, or to, um, you know, see them as less than in some way. So it's super important to be in relationships uh, that write over those old tapes. People are uncomfortable talking about race because we've never been taught or equipped to talk about race. We start making excuses for it, um, and we start socializing our children that way, we speak about it that way, um, and we really need to take the shame out of it and really have the difficult and uncomfortable conversations about how race shows up for us every day. I think the first step um, in understanding and becoming aware of our racial difference is realizing that we're all coming from a common ground in that race is part of all of our stories. We all see race, um, we all see difference. It's whether or not you choose to embrace it um, or ignore it. So what we want to do is embrace that. And it might be scary and it might be really, really uncomfortable, um, but the journey is worthwhile. I identify mostly as a French woman in her mid-30s. I've always seen myself as, as black. Funnily enough, a lot of my friends would tell me things like, but you're not even that black, or I don't see you as a black person, I don't see your color, which comes from a good place. But there is something really problematic about that. It's like, like it's as if they were saying, I don't see you. I grew up spending a lot of time at my grandma's house. You know, I had, the people I loved and cared about and I looked up to did handicrafts. My first quilt was I had hundreds of rectangles of silk that were Thai scraps. And about that time, I really started crushing on Ricky, he wound up being my husband. And I don't know what happened, but I just thought, I'm gonna make him a quilt. And that's how I'm gonna seal the deal with this fella. So for a long time, my queerness, my, my being a gay male, was very salient for me. I've been lucky to have folks around me who've helped me see how salient whiteness and maleness is for them. It's like Fight Club, right? The first rule of whiteness is you don't talk about whiteness and you don't talk about race. It's really, it's really hard to talk about, because like the thing is that when you talk about racial identity, you have to talk about racism. I find this harder actually to deal with people who tell me that racism is not a thing than racist people. I don't ever deal with racist people. But people would tell me that it's not real, that it's not true, that I'm exaggerating, that I'm too sensitive. That really, really gets me angry. Like the denial of my reality is, it makes me angry. I always get comments when, like, when the weather is humid 
and it shrinks. <laughs> and people are like, oh, what's wrong? Did you cut your hair? No, it's humidity. It's just the way it is. Oh, it looks funny. Like, don't look at you and say that your hair looks funny. That's actually really awkward. It's terrible. That's also something that I don't understand. Just because it's different, they think that they can tell you, but it's just you, you whatever. Okay. I'm like, I'm all the Sometimes it's not necessarily directed at me. It's just hearing the way people talk about, or black people, or people of color, or actually anyone different. Hearing things like gay people are like this, or Asian people are like that. It's this idea that being in a box already is hard, and it's a terrible box you put people into. My mom and I, when we moved here, uh, we were the only people of color. So the kids just, they just didn't know. They are, they are just never, they have never seen people like us. So they wouldn't play with me at the very beginning when I moved. Uh, so I was like four year old. And I don't know, I had this sense of like non-belonging, just not, just not fitting. A few times like kids would approach me and like, touch my skin and look at their hands as if it was going to come off. Like they had, they had never seen black people before. Usually when I tell this story, people are like, oh, but they were just kids and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I was a kid too. One day in the, in the cafeteria, I remember the teacher looked around and said, look who's missing from the room today. Uh, and we all knew who they were talking about. The teachers called them the city buses, but they were the, the buses with black and brown kids from the city. And she said, you know, shame on them for being late. And of course, these kids don't have any, any control over when the buses get here in the morning. But there were all these messages about, you know, the city buses, the kids that come in on the city buses, they're different than you. My second grade, all my friends were girls. Uh, the boys were rowdy and rough, and the girls were sweet and fun, so we'd hang out. And one day, on the playground, I kissed this girl, and we knew we were doing something we probably shouldn't do. We knew we'd get in trouble, and we did. We went to the principal's office, and um, I was shocked by the message, though. It, it, I, it wasn't that I got in trouble for kissing a girl. It, the message was, why are you kissing that black girl? But by the time I got to high school, I mean, just me existing in the world already broke so many of the social rules that I had been being told that I pretty much questioned any of them. I didn't know why. There was some sense that, um, you know, my black peers and I had some shared experiences that we had both experienced kind of the otherness of the world, being othered or being, um, yeah, being put upon in some similar ways, but there was also some sense that our experiences were very different. I'm still worried about not fitting. That's, I think that's my main worry. I'm still worried about being rejected and, you know, like professionally or anywhere I go, if I try to make new friends, um, I just still feel like either I'm not going to be accepted or I'm going to be looked at some sort of curiosity. Um, I think the way it reflects as well in my adult life is, um, for some reason, I've sort of transposed that to my daughter. I, there is nothing that scares me more than the idea of her being rejected by all of us. Um, and she's not, she's like, she's fine. But uh, the, the idea that people could hurt her the way I was hurt is just, as a mom, I just can't accept that. Thank you.
I've always had this sense of like just not fitting and not belonging. And I don't think I've ever realized that this was linked to my racial identity and knowing that now, like it makes total sense, like it actually makes sense if I look at it. I think that what's different for me, I don't have a lot of assumptions on people and things. I tend to question a lot and that's like really part of actually what I do as a UX designer is that you don't operate based on assumption, you have to understand people that biases uh, will prevent you from understanding what they need. I found myself in a community of individuals who led adult learning uh, for racial justice work. And part of our practice was exploring our own stories. And at the time, part of my story was seeing the black boys in high school as particularly dangerous. I was very lucky, though, to have a community around me that really pushed me on that. Through digging, I realized that narrative was, you know, added on. It was, it was about the messages that I got around me, and, and, and there were not actual experiences connected to it. This is where we're going to focus our time and energy today. And this is about our skill. This is about our practice. And you can see our, uh, less of us in this room agree that we know what to do after we step in it, right? If we do something biased, we say something that's sexist or racist, a uh, few of us know what do we do after it happens, because it will happen, right? And then... Initially, whiteness just meant don't be black. And later probably meant don't be a person of color or don't associate with them. You know, later, I think I started understanding how whiteness afforded me some protections that others didn't have, some opportunities others didn't have, and that made me feel bad. It made me feel ashamed or guilty. After that, I think whiteness meant having some responsibility to do something and also just always making sure that in 30 years, people aren't sitting here having to make a movie about racism, right? That would be a real crying shame. I can't say that I've changed, but something is definitely shifting. I was sitting in the car, driving through Paris, and I was looking up at the bus next to us, and there was this black girl looking at the window, and we sort of like look at each other and smile, and that's, that's, that's what happens now, but um, when I was younger, that's never happened. I would have looked away. Since I've started this journey, it's helped me like find things that I like about myself. It's helped me be proud of my culture. It's helped me reconnect with, yeah, part of me that I've sort of totally ignored for so long. It's helped me like just look at things like from my perspective and not as someone trying to be someone else. Launching into a conversation about race can be really uncomfortable, but sometimes we just have to make it simple and sometimes really just ask questions about who you are as a human being. How would you describe your identity? What's the first time you realized that you had a race? When you hear the word race, what comes to mind? Is it an experience or is it just a concept? So as you think about going on this journey for yourself, what does that mean to you? What does identity mean to you? 